first thing that people say about Latin is that it's a dead language. Well, we don't feel it's dead, we feel it's alive and vibrant. You gay! Acadorus! Adsunt! The title of this play is Papaya. Papaya is Ancula. Ancula vium spectat. Dominus in hoto dormit. Dominus est lucreo. Lucreo est senex. Ego amicum. This is Latin, but we're not at a prep school in Middle England. Selwyn is one of more than a dozen state primary schools teaching Latin in Newham, East London, a borough where over half the children speak English as a second language. Latin has in the past been the domain of the, the fee-paying school um, and that was something also that I felt I wanted to break out from um, and that Latin you know, is elitist and Latin is something that you wouldn't do normally in school. That's something that I wanted to break away from because the language offers enormous learning opportunities and also cross-cultural opportunities. And the children are just really, really fascinated by almost everything connected to that era of time as well. Actores in teatro, fabulam agun, yuge, actores adsunt, ego quoque at teatrum contendo. We have a head teacher teaching it, but we also have gifted and talented coordinators, and I believe learning mentors or teaching assistants. A lot of the teachers leading it are not actually Latin specialists. And the, the best model that's been happening in Newham, really, is, is a teacher who says, oh, yes, I really wish I'd learnt it, and I'm going to learn it with the children. So anyone who's enthusiastic really can take on, on the mantle of teaching it. Head teacher Sean Tobin is one such newcomer to Latin. He's learning alongside pupils from years three, four and five at West Ham Church Primary. You will say that word. Latissimus. Very happy. I'm exactly in the same position as the children. I've not studied Latin. In fact, I don't know any, another language. So being able to use a programme to, to teach me at the same time as teaching the children has been excellent. So the, the computer, the use of the whiteboard and the course book is, is really a benefit of this course and the children have certainly liked that. That you get to use the computers, you get to go on the internet and do group work and work on your own. Pupils are learning Latin with the help of a DVD and online course. This is opening up new horizons for independent learning. The children can go at their own pace. It can also be teacher-led, but I think the fact that they can go off in different tangents themselves at home um, on the internet is, and with the discs is very useful. At schools like Sandringham, lunchtime and after-school Latin clubs are held in ICT suites. I love the fact that they see me in the playground on YouTube and they'll come up and they'll say something to me in Latin to show me what they've learned at home. So play. Press their friends and clientes. Caecilius est in atrium. Okay, so then you repeat it, okay? The children who were chosen um, initially to come to the Latin club, um, I think, gave it good word of mouth around the playground, shall we say. So I started getting children coming to find me at break times um, and saying, could they come and join in as well? I particularly enjoy the course because um, when you're on the computers having fun, and you can learn while you're having fun as well. Okay. Mm, I enjoy that in because it's kind of fun and um, you can learn about the past and then what other people used to speak. Indua, Indua is to the door. So Quintus comes to the door. You want to learn more languages and Latin, like, it's kind of easy. Some of the words in Latin are like words in French and Spanish. It gives children confidence with learning foreign language and it shows them how languages have changed over time and it introduces them to, to new things like word order and the cases and they're all transferable skills that can be used when learning other languages. And they like the novelty of it. They like the fact that no one else speaks it and um, and that's quite a motivator for them. Gatilius S in Arthur. Rectangular panels inside the bag were painted in a single Good. Colour. So off we go. Back at Selwyn, 
A more formal lesson reveals how this introduction to the Latin language is complemented by a colourful exploration of Roman culture and civilization. It's all based around Pompeii. So uh, immediately there's a, a, a historical and romantic um, association. Can I <laughs> All right, you look in your book if you need the subtitles. But it also teaches them grammar in a really accessible way, a gentle sort of way, not the, the rather aggressive way that I would have learned Latin grammar at school. Puella labra, labora. The girl is working. So the plural would be? Puellae laborant. The girl the girls are working. Right, so you can see that puellae, the noun has changed, hasn't it? But also, the verb has to change, because it's laborant. So we've got a plural noun, so we have to have a plural ending to the verb. Talking about the grammar, they take that understanding back into their English language lessons. I know for a fact that it's undergirding their understanding of nouns, of nominative, accusative, even something as simple as singular and plural. They have to learn the fact that in Latin the verb might take a different position in the sentence. So uh, very complex ideas and, and um, concepts of grammar. Later on, when they perhaps take up another language, they'll be able to relate what they've learnt in Latin and say, oh, I understand that. Yes, I remember we did that in Latin. So um, I, I think that it's a very powerful tool for their future learning. Argentarius et uxo et tetrum ambulet. The banker and his wife are walking in the theatre. Okay, there is a word in English, uxorious, which is wifely, all right? But that's a bit of vocabulary you might not have met so far. Our children, mostly English second language children in this school, I feel that Latin is actually widening their vocabulary and deepening their understanding of words. Now, are there any of those words that you could look at and say, hmm, I could have guessed that because it's very similar to something I say in English? Agricole, with many farms because agriculture. Good, we get the word agriculture from agricola. Yeah. Note means sailors because novice means boat. Oh, I see. You remember Actually, novice is boat. Yeah. Notai is mm, sailors, sailors, so you would have connected that. That's good. And then we've got a word navy, haven't we? But we've also got an adjective which we, is nautical. Anything to but the benefits aren't just linguistic. Working out a, a language is like working out a problem. And every time they have a Latin sentence to translate, they're again solving a problem. Okay. So, Ad Adam, you, you forgot oops. How could you have remembered it from English? What do you mean? From the word urban. Urban. The problem-solving element of it suits them well. And the fact that they're doing something fresh and new, but it also re really relates well to other languages. So it has a sense of familiarity as well as excitement for something new, I think. Pastores, because yeah. fields are pastures. pastures. Pastures, that's right. And the shepherds work in the pastures. fields, in the pastures. They may have studied the Romans, but to actually understand the culture, they have to know the language. And to get behind a, a civilization like Pompeii uh, has really taken them into history. Today, the Year Six gifted and talented children from Selwyn are sharing their passion for ancient Rome with comedian Alex Horn, whose own stand-up show is based on Latin. All of these paintings the Latin group have done, and okay. it's all based on Latin wall paintings because many um, Romans, they, they used to uh, take ideas from the Greeks and put them on their walls. So we copied theirs and stuck it on our walls. Very good. So you've copied the Romans who copied the Greeks? Yeah. Okay, do you think it's a dead language? So, now, dead, so why are you learning it if it's a dead language, it's generally? It's a cool language. Because it's a cool language. Is Latin cool? Yeah. It yeah. wasn't when I was got. I'm glad it's cool. So I found Latin especially useful so that I could read all the different Latin texts. So there's, there's stories, there's poems, there's speeches by politicians, there's graves telling us about different people. How do you think you'd use Latin? Latin to teach us about the timelines and dates and stuff and, like, what famous events they did. So do you think with Latin you might be able to understand more about how children lived in those days? Yeah. Because, yeah. like, it must have been really, like, boring for them not to, like, have the TV or cinema. See, I think you'll be surprised. When you learn some more Latin, you'll find they had lots to do. 
I think the Roman world is quite an attractive one for kids because it's, it's quite glamorous, things like the gladiators, and they've seen it all on TV, even things like asterisks. There's, there's all sorts of um, areas of life that they know about, and if they can learn the language, then, well, if, if they can learn it in a way that relates to that culture, then it should make it more exciting. Salvate! Salvate! As part of Newham's collaborative vision for gifted and talented, Children studying Latin around the borough have come together to enjoy Alex's Latin show. Well, when I was at school, I had an amazing teacher, OK, who really kind of captured my imagination, which meant from that point onwards, I didn't have an imagination. <laughs> right. So people think Latin's a hard language. Are you finding it hard so far? No. Good. OK. That's dispelling the myth. I think the point of the kids learning Latin is to broaden their imaginations, really. Um, it gives them a massive head start when it comes to not only other languages, even maths and problem solving, but also just general confidence, I think. During the course of the show, the teams embark on a series of linguistic adventures, collecting golden keys and learning Latin along the way. Hugh, you've been challenged to a duel by Mesh. You've got three options. You can either accipio, which means I accept, uh, confer, which means you want to talk together, or veto, which means veto. veto. It means you don't want to do it. You're going to confer with your male friends. Yeah. Okay. The gentlemen are now conferring. What do you think I should do? Go on. Go on. Which one do you want to do? Veto. Okay, yeah. veto. Now the punishment for vetoing is the Roman game. Basically, we're going to do some Roman games now, which is Ludi Romani. But because you vetoed, I'm afraid that's cowardly. So we're going to be playing for one of your golden keys. Yeah. Yeah. Aware that the number taking Latin has dwindled dramatically. Alex hopes to make the subject more appealing through his comic approach. It couldn't be closer as we go into the final month, December, the final exam, which we call Distractio de Bellum, which is, is Latin for... Do you recognise Bellum? Yes, Headmaster. It's tug of war. It does mean tug of war. So it's a tug of war. So please welcome, with a round of applause, the two captains. There they come. OK, if you go to the red end, you're going to be tugging him towards you using Latin words. Girls. That's three words, meaning beware the eyes of March. Very good. Canis est in atrium. The dog is in the atrium. Very good. He does wonders for their spoken English, for working together in groups, and I think it does a lot for their self-esteem uh, to, to be able to say uh, when they go home or when they're outside, and we do Latin as well. Uh, so, so it's something they're proud of, and it's something that adds value to the other work they do. I'm afraid he is in the red. He is in the red. I'm afraid Mezhebin. The victor is Mezhebin, and the girls are the winners. What started as three or four schools in Newham has now sort of blossomed to 12 schools, and I have a feeling that soon we're going to be even getting more schools coming on board because it's been so successful. I also feel quite invigorated by um, teaching Latin. It's um, opened up a new door to me, a door that I thought perhaps uh, was closed and I never would visit again. And I'm very excited. The children are badgering me the whole time, when can we go to Pompeii? We want to see this place. We want to see where the Forum was. We want to see where the House of Caecilius was. And um, I'm all for it. And uh, I'm very enthusiastic because I see a great future for teaching Latin to primary children. Mm -hmm.